The Property Show is offered to you by Kings Group, a multi-award winning company. Your local high street property business that delivers on results and service. We'll get you moving. The Property Show is produced by Ira Levanu and presented by Carl Knight, partner at the Kings Group Estate Agency. Good evening and welcome to tonight's show. Auctions, are they really all that? We're going to look and compare at different types of auctions and high street estate agents. The idea was in today's market, there's lots of distressed sellers due to death, illness, divorce. Some sellers just can't actually achieve a sale on their property. So I wanted to look at alternative ways to try and help you, the listeners out there. We'll look at the advantages and disadvantages of auctions. Are they right for you, the listeners, to consider if you're buying or selling property? And everything else you really need to know about this part of the property world. So if you've got any interest in that there, and let's hope plenty of you have, it'd be great if you could text us in on 07976 611033 with any questions you've got. Anything to do with buying, selling, where maybe auctions could help or show you the way. Or give us a call on the number here at the station 0208 346 3345. That's 0208 346 3345. So to discuss and debate this question with me, I have a plethora of guests this evening. Got with me Stuart McKay from King's Group. Good evening, Stuart. Evening, Carl. Stuart's little bio. Stuart's been a loyal and hard-working part of the King's family since 2007. During these 11 years, he's worked predominantly in the Edmonton area and has become a synonymous with Edmonton as the green itself. Is that true, Stuart? (laughs) (laughs) Something like that. In 2018, Stuart was nominated for an individual award for customer service at the prodigious Esters, which emphasises his commitment to customer service. A fun fact about Stuart is he's a bit of a teapot they don't call him teapot stew pot for nothing drinks a phenomenal amount of tea during the day and he's even got an old tetley tea people and pg tips monkey on on his desk stew is the king of christmas jumpers and he's eagerly awaiting the newest arrival from his collection making an outing next month looking forward to the christmas jumper last day working day at king's this year which uh, Stu invented and believe is spreading among other officers. We, do we know what we're going to be seeing this year, Stu? Keep it a surprise for no, now. Keep it a surprise, OK. Finally, he's a massive Spurs fan. So this, together with his love of travelling, allows him to follow Spurs around Europe in the Champions League, not the Europa League, as other less successful teams do, Stuart says. Not <laughs> for me. now, anyway. Yeah. <laughs> Evening again, Stuart. Thank you for being with us. Philip, good evening to you. Hi, Stuart. Uh, Hi, Carl. That's all okay. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm the better looking one. You are indeed. uh, (laughs) (laughs) Philip Waterfield is is, uh, Stretton's Chartered Surveyors. Philip is a director of Stretton's, a well known and established North East London firm based based firm of chartered surveyors and auctioneers. He has been with the firm for over 30 years and first debuted on the auction rostrum in 1994. Oh, that was a long way back, but yes, I can hear my (laughs) knees knocking now when I was up there. (laughs) I think we can probably still hear them knocking now, now you're on here as well. So, (laughs) Philip has been running the auction team for the past 10 years and oversees the sale, that's not oversee, that's oversees the sale of about 80 million property, 80 million pounds worth of property a year, comprising a wide range of land and buildings in London and around the UK and sometimes further afield, including Cyprus. Indeed, we have three auctions in Cyprus, we've sold properties in Bulgaria, area germany greece really probably scotland how long have you been fine. selling properties in cyprus for well we did three auctions in within about one year about eight no ten years ago probably ten years ago yeah that's excellent outside interests are centered around family life managing four teenagers and spending time with his danish wife at home in essex and their summer house 100 kilometers west of copenhagen indeed yes we yeah are. Yeah, a little summer house. Oh, fantastic. Other interests include learning to pay, to pay, play, sorry, the accordion and concertina, but not at the same time. I'm afraid not. I inherited a concert, an accordion from my father-in-law, who's sadly no longer with us, but I've since picked up the concertina, but tried to play them at the same time is is not easy. I wouldn't be wearing Stuart's jumper playing one either. <laughs> <laughs> 
yeah actually when you see Stuart you, you sound when you look at it and see how loud it is it sounds like someone's playing I'm a sure, concertina yes. trust me Stuart Collar Brown from Patterson's Auctions Stuart is a business development manager at Patterson's the UK's fastest growing online auctioneers is that yes, correct indeed. yes indeed yeah. thanks Carl He's been with the firm since June of this year and has worked in property auctions for the past 11 years in London, South East and Bath. And in fact, uh, you guys know each other, you and Philip, don't We you? do, yes. Yep, we work together, we're, we're friends. You haven't played a concertina together? No, no. no. I give him a squeeze every now and again. <laughs> <laughs> I have heard, but that's something else. Stuart's been involved in the sale of over 3,000 auction lots across the length and breadth of the UK, including public toilets and a country mansion. Not at the same time, I think. No, no, very no. different. Yeah, and everything in between. Outside of work, Stuart and his wife, Victoria, ground rent broker. Well, 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 anyway, moving that's swiftly on. <laughs> yeah, spent all their spare time with their three-year-old daughter in Hertfordshire, and on the odd occasion they get a night off they'll be found in one of the many michelin star restaurants in the capital good luck enjoy that I'll, I'll, i shall stick to my local greek restaurants thank you <laughs> paul cacciatore who's from bolton and coastal says he's going to be our legal eagle this evening oh, try. yeah you try and keep us on the straight and narrow and put us right yeah you know what estate agents are like and auctioneers they do they tend to exaggerate things. Oh, absolutely paul's been a fancy executor of bolton and co and has over 37 years experience in both residential and commercial conveyancing he acts for developers investors and private clients alike he takes great pride in his job and even after 37 years still gets the buzz of that late friday afternoon exchange very sad yeah no not at all not at all we're working for clients so that's what it's all about it is you indeed. should be should be putting that effort in and making sure that these cases go through paul's married with four children hence why he's still working <laughs> <laughs> and he also lives in Hertfordshire, hence why he's still working, I suppose. Yeah, he's always tried to instill in his children a good work ethic, carried out with passion and care. That's exactly what we all have to do in this industry, so that's, that's for sure. Paul's passion is good food, fine wine, enjoyed with good friends. And you're in the legal profession and you have friends, is that correct? Uh, apparently so, yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, well, good evening, guys. Good evening. Lovely good evening. to have you yeah, with good us. To see you. We're going to talk all things auctions in a minute, but just let me say again, we need some listeners out there. Call us in, ask us any questions you've got. Telephone number 0208 346 3345 or send us a text on 07976 611 032. We want to try and answer any questions or queries you've got. The idea of tonight is to show that auctions potentially are not just for some people, they're for everybody in the right area. Although I know Stuart to Mr. Stuart McKay is going to argue differently. So let's go. Philip, tell us again how you got into the auction business then. Well, it was by chance, really. I went to a chattels auction where they're selling antiques and junk on a summer trip with my parents when I was about 17, and I said to my father... So, oh, so what, what's chattels, then? Uh, chattels is things you can move, basically. All so right. you watch um, watch these bargain hunt programmes on TV <sighs> where they're buying old paintings and right. any old rubbish, basically, it seems to me, half the time. But anyway, I was quite attracted by the whole show that was being put on there. We went to speak to the auctioneer, my father and I, and I thought, yep, yeah, this is something I'd like to do. And I slowly drifted into uh, urban land administration, estate management and property. We're still with a passion for auctions. I joined Stretton's 30 years ago. They've been doing auctions since 1937. And one year I just said to Ben Tobin, the senior director and the senior auctioneer, what if you don't turn up one day at the auction? He said, well, why? Do you fancy having a go? So I put my money where my mouth was and went on the roster in about 1994 and I've been doing it ever since. Right. Bit of a, a bit of a exhibitionist, are we? A showman. My great-grandfather showman. was in vaudeville, so perhaps that's where it comes oh, from. Oh, right. Yes. Well, there you go. So th- what I wanted to get out to the listeners, th- th- there's two very distinct types of auction, isn't there? Indeed. Yeah. Uh, the ones I think you're referring to probably are what I do primarily is what we call the ballroom auction. They're auctions that are held in the a strictly, room. The strictly. Only s- in strictly in the ballroom, correct. So what you see on Homes Under the Hammer, if you like, and although we can have, and have the facility to do online auctions, I think Stuart's going to talk to you today about what his company excels at, and that's online auctions, where basically I suppose it's akin to the eBay bidding, where you put a property up online and people have a certain period of time to bid for it, and they'll bid, and hopefully they'll successfully buy the property online. Right. Stuart, do you want to tell me the difference between the auctions that you were involved, Patterson's and, and even King's Group? Yeah, definitely. So I started life as an estate agent uh, about 16 years ago and then went into ballroom auctions. So I did about 10 years in ballroom auctions. And moving into the online world has been a bit of an eye-opener, which is great. Um, But I I think the biggest difference is it's so much more flexible than a live In what way? Why is it it more flexible? The live auction, you set your date... You know, probably eighteen months in advance. Well, six months in advance. Oh, well, we have ours eighteen months 18 in advance. Months in yeah. advance. So you've six got probably six to seven a year, yep. and they're very much structured around catalog dates, closing dates, print catalog, and then the the live room itself. Uh, with online auction, you can have an auction every single day, 
Um, you can have a 10 day auction, 20 day auction, 30 day auction. It's completely bespoke to the client. So it gives. So there's no set times. No set time. No. How do you decide whether it's a 10 day auction, a 20 day auction, or whatever? How, what, completely what? up to the client. Right. Yeah. So, so it's the client's discretion. So it, it, it works for their time skills rather than the availability of a ballroom. But I think it's fair to say that you need a, a minimum period of time in which to sell a property normally. You wouldn't get yeah, a yeah. phone call on a Friday and say, I want it sold by Monday. You could do that. But I think that I'm sure, Stuart, you'd probably say you're looking for what, 14 days? 14, Tip, typ- typical 10 working days. Auction time scale is 28 days. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Stuart, can I ask you, but how do you do that? Do you provide a pack to people that are bidding? Yeah, so once once a client agrees the reserve price, the starting price, and to go into the the auction, once you've got an uh, auction contract, we'll instruct solicitor at the same time to to prepare the legal pack. So usually a week or 10 days into the marketing, the legal pack is available for a buyer to come and have a look at. So effectively, once we have that legal pack, we can exchange contracts with a successful buyer. So the quickest one I've done recently is uh, 19 days from going live to exchange contracts. Stuart, Stuart McKay, Kings. Could Kings sell a property quicker than that? Um, well, not just Kings, any high street estate agent. Essentially, if everybody does their job, yes. So, mortgage When we broker, say sell, what, you mean agree a sale or could exchange contracts? Um, well, both. If, the, if it's the right price, it's going to sell straight away. If solicitors on both sides and mortgage broker, etc., etc., all do their job, then, yeah, we had one recently went through in 21 days, for argument's sake. OK, well, that's, so, not, that's not 48 hours, though, is it? <laughs> Well, you no, sure you have instances be. where a sale has fallen through and somebody steps into the shoes and buys it quickly. So they've, they've done it very quickly, haven't they, in that case? Yeah, they potentially. I mean, you can, have, you can have someone who, who who jumps in and does it and does it in 48 hours. If someone's buying cash, you can, essentially, if you're buying cash, yeah. you can do pretty much whatever you want. But I mean, I think, that's the key, the willingness of both parties and how quickly they want to move. I think that, that's the problem with the property system in this country, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, mean, that, that, I, I don't want to get dragged into that. that. I think that's for another show. We could debate the system. I'm too about this all the time. I know you do. I know you do. That's why I've got no ears. <laughs> so, what what are the advantages, or, or first of all, of an online auction compared to, say, uh, a live auction? So, again, I'd probably say the main advantage is the the flexibility. Um, as I said, the the client's not not restricted to catalog dates. So okay. that's, that's that's probably one of the biggest things. Again, advantages is much sim- similar in that you've got the certainty, you've got speed, you've got transparency of the sale. The client sets the reserve price as they would do in a, in a live auction. But they've also got the flexibility to actually accept offers at any time during that period. Okay. So that's probably the who, biggest who, who, and so I don't, With online auctions, who actually pays the fee then? Yeah, so in our how we're set up, the buyer pays the fee, not the seller. So actually it's a great thing from our point of view that we can go to a client and say it, there is absolutely no 0% commission to pay for a seller. To oh, sell, so so sell sellers client. don't have to pay anything? No. no, just their legal costs. But in terms of agency fees, there's no cost. To the okay. And, uh, but it's the buyer that pays it's it? It's the buyer that pays So it. the buyer has to pay if a, 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 a make an offer that's acceptable to the seller, but then pay the fees on top? Exactly, yeah. Okay. I think it's fair to point out, though, that some sellers in the ballroom auctions, they do put their... They put a clause in quite often that the buyer has to pay something yeah. towards the, the purchase. So, yeah, you, you see, as, as Paul will tell you, you <coughs> need to read all the documentation. I think most uh, special conditions now contain a clause where the successful buyer pays a percentage of the purchase price towards the seller's solicitor's or legal cost. Their solicitor fees as well. Yeah, and that, and that's become more and more common. So yes, I agree with that statement. Okay, well, that's quite important. I think people need to know that. Uh, so again, uh, if anyone's out there, please give us a call on 0208 346 3345. We're really interested in uh, what your sort of thoughts are. Are you struggling to sell your property at the moment? Do you think that the auctions, or, uh, be it an online auction or a live auction, could be the way forward for you i mean on that point what, what what sort of people sell properties philip primarily in in your uh, live auctions well i suspect anybody in this room and any of your listeners are potential sellers of properties um auction is almost like a lifestyle choice I, I, want to sell I, a property, I, I think sorry to interrupt but i think a lot of people think that auctions are not really for them they're for other people I think that there is a great, there is a fear of auctions, a lot of myths behind auction that only rubbish is put in auction. You have to be very careful. I would try slightly turn it on its head now. So if you buy an auction, you're a consumer, you're protected by consumer protection legislation for a start. So long gone are the days where it's buyer beware. Everything is put out on the table for you. We can only tell you what we know, but the solicitors will have prepared their legal pack. There'll be the searches on, on there. You should go and inspect the property. So in many ways, you're you're quite well protected there. But I agree, there's a certain degree of nervousness there. I think that's as much really by putting your hand up and 
hoping that the, the hammer will fall with you and also perhaps secretly hoping it doesn't fall with you because you're not sure whether you made the right decision. But if you do your homework, I'm sure the solicitor will advise and anybody in property will say, if you've done your homework, there shouldn't really be any fear. Okay, so so anyone should be looking to sell properties. They should consider this as a, as a route, maybe. It's, it's a choice. I mean, I, I often use the analogy, you know, if you've got your nice residential property, you've refurbished, been a family home, you're not in a hurry to sell, then don't use auction. Only 2% of properties in the UK are sold by auction, so 98% aren't sold by auction so the estate agents are fairly safe at the moment if however you've just been offered a job in australia and you need to move within four weeks it's probably a good opportunity to put your house in auction and see it go to the room have it sold before you get on that flight off to sydney or wherever you're going to are those the type of clients that you you see a lot yeah we see a lot of that i think the main people that we see um selling through auction online auction is really they need that time skill so that they're they need a a decision from a buyer by a certain date and if they get that certain figure then they're willing to kind of accept that and then move on to do the next thing so i think the price is almost secondary because the certainty of the exchange of contracts is the most important thing to them Okay. I've got a text come in here. Here's a question for you. I'm not sure this is relevant to, but let's, let's read it out first. What are the experts' views on selling your house via a raffle? Where well, people buy a ticket, for example, £20 each, and when the reserve price has been met, the raffle takes place. That's from Billy in Burnt Oak. That's actually quite a good question. Uh, it's very, actually uh, it's that, an actually. incredibly good question. It actually was in the newspaper recently. It One was, of my colleagues yeah, showed yeah. me where a couple were doing it. They, the interesting, the clever thing, I suppose, is they they set the boundaries. If they don't sell enough tickets to realise the value of the property, then the auction may not necessarily go ahead. Well, you have got all the problems of going around giving everybody their twenty pound. Well, I, it's <laughs> also trying to fold up the tickets as well. Depends <laughs> how many thousands you have. But they, you go to an airport, they do it with cars, don't they? You run a yes. raffle for a car. That's very true. And some cars, are, frankly, are probably more expensive than some of the houses in, yeah. in the UK. So it does happen whether it's a, a, a regular thing something you do all the time i'm not quite sure it's presumably it's covered by gambling law rather than anything mm. else so yes, you, you have to consider it you have to consider it yeah. in, in a different way uh, so and the other it. thing how do you, you know what are you buying the ticket you you don't know what you're buying yeah. there, there could be things wrong with that property that you're not aware of and once you bought the ticket if you're successful you've you're lumbered mm. with any liabilities yeah i think it's important to remember that not all property has positive value as paul's saying you could find a property that's heavily contaminated it might cost you a million pounds to decontaminate it and afterwards it could only be worth two hundred thousand pounds so it could be a good way of getting rid of a property that's that can't be valued up by any of the estate agents well, maybe billy in burnt oak has got a property that he wants to get rid of maybe that's why he's considering maybe that. He's just bought one. or yeah. billy should yeah. perhaps consider Stretton's auctions that's probably easy <laughs> <laughs> well, Stuart, uh, do you think King should consider doing raffles for properties? <laughs> so, uh, in our office, we uh, we saw this a few weeks ago. So, naturally, we've all got a ticket for this three million pound property that we're all going to win. Um, Is that true? Yeah, yeah, we saw it a few weeks ago. Oh, right. And um, you all bought yeah. a ticket? Yeah, yeah, all of us, literally all of us. Uh, how much are the tickets? They're like fifteen pound or something, twenty pound. Well, yeah, so well, it is. It's a bargain if you, <laughs> well, if you yeah, win. It's not, <laughs> well, depending on whether there's thirty three million pounds of, of uh, outstanding <laughs> issues. I think they've got a figure. If they don't sell enough tickets, hmm. the winner wins a certain amount of money. Is it like a hundred grand or something like that? It's. Okay, I think possibly. they've got some sort of. Uh, I think there's an admin charge to send your money back as well. Yeah, probably. <laughs> <Which is> probably <laughs> more than probably going to cost us more than we put <laughs> in. Anyway. I, I think the point you make is uh, as well about hidden risks is a is a is a great point. I, I I've got an article. It's from a little a few years ago mind you it's from the guardian back in 2011 and there's a, a gentleman called colin todd successfully bid for an unmodernized flat in renfordshire town in the renfordshire town of gurok he thought he had landed a bargain the victorian property overlooked the firth of clyde in a handsome part of town and the auction catalogue declared the repossessed ground floor flat an interesting development opportunity for a dwelling or private property interesting it indisputably was a week later the building had vanished A tip-off had alerted the local council to alleged structural problems and it was demolished after council inspectors deemed it unsafe. Mr Todd then found himself faced with a bill for demolition plus £37,500, the price of a property that no longer existed. That sounds terrible, but I suppose that can happen because it did. Is that that right, Paul? I think people have to be very careful, hence why solicitors are involved in the acquisition of property. We check do searches which are very sort of current they can't be more than six months old whereas you know if you buy how did that get through then do you well think? presumably the the vendor the buyer didn't do his searches just went to the auction and bid for it but right. it was a knockdown price yeah. though wasn't it <laughs> <laughs> Dear, oh dear, oh dear. I I, I think we can probably laugh about it now. It is seven years ago, but I'm sure at the time uh, Mr Todd wasn't laughing about it. So, I mean, that's 
I, I suppose buyer beware is always the same in yeah. property, isn't it? But I think auctions have come a long way now in as much that they now prepare a rather comprehensive package, Indeed. which yeah. is prepared by solicitors. You've got searches, which are current. And so really, the, the, the buyers nearly need to have the property checked by their own surveyor for valuation purposes if they need a mortgage. It's still, it's still frightening in this day and age that people will buy properties without looking at a legal perk. And then go to their solicitor the following day and say, I've just bought this, what do you think? Yeah. And significantly they buy without inspecting, or yeah. too often you see on the TV programmes, they bought lot four because they went, came for lot two and couldn't get it. So they thought four looked like number two. The fact it was in a different county and it was a different construction <laughs> yeah. is, is a bit worrying. Well, th- th- this is one of the reasons why I wanted to do this show, because I think this... It, 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 Everything's easy when you know and you understand. So, and I think it's important that, with, that this sort of information gets out there to sort of say, well, there's no myth around auctions. It is all pretty straightforward, be it a live auction or be it an online auction. you just got to make sure that you do your homework and you just spend a little bit of money up front yeah. or whatever, you're doing a bit of investigation, make sure you're in a good position and you can find the bargains. I, mean, I think there is bargains out there to buy at auction, just as I think some properties are sold for very good money at auction. I, yeah. I, I don't know. Have you, uh, have you, Stuart, got any great examples of things selling at good money and, and yeah, good, I mean, I've, good. I've, the, the thing i always said to people about oh you might get a bargain at auction yes you might but you can't control the person next to you so if they want it more than you you'll have to bid for it hmm. and you can that's that's the beauty of the ceiling there's no ceiling price at all so i've seen properties sell for 300 percent above their guide price i can remember a, oh, probably more than 20 years ago a friend of mine I bumped into him actually around a property that was going for auction. I'm just doing some surveying, checking out the local competition, so to speak. And he said to me, I, I, I'm going to go and bid at this auction. This is a true story. I said, well, what do you... Oh, he said to me, what do you think it'll go for? At the time, it was a house in Enfield. And I said, oh, about 52500 is what it's probably worth. But I think some clown will probably pay about 58, 59000 for it. I said, because what happens is when you get in the room, your arm keeps going up. And he said, oh, I'd like to do it. So we organised it. We uh, got a mortgage organised for him. We did the survey before. We got the legal pack. I helped him. Anyway, he went on the morning of the auction and said, well, I'm going. I said, well, good luck. But unfortunately, what are you going to bid on it? And he said, well, about 52. I said, I don't think you'll get it because, as I say, the market's booming and there's always some clown in the room who will go too high. So forgot all about it. Came in about three o'clock that afternoon and said, you were right. I said, what do you mean? He said, you were right. Some clown bid 59,500 for it. I said, I told you. I said, the world's full of him. He said, yes, you're looking at him. <laughs> and and <laughs> that is a true story. He he said, I just got carried away. So I think, th- does that happen a, oh, a lot? You like to see a bit of auction fever setting in. Yeah. But, you know, <laughs> my job is not, or our job is not to con people. Our job is obviously to act for the seller. So we want to achieve the best price we can. We're not looking to sell bargains. And bargains are all relative. I always say to people... You're welcome to join my company, Hindsight Investments and Developments Limited, because with hindsight, we'd have done a lot of things differently and it either would have paid that much or wouldn't have paid that much. But it's only time, really. Time is a great dealer. And you don't really make money immediately. I think long of those days where you had the deal, it was the domain of the dealers that come in the room, they carve it up, buy the properties and move on. Mm. Now... I say you don't need to go around the world. Come round, come to our auctions. The world goes around you. There's so many different people there, different walks of life, and it's a very free market competition. And if you want to buy the property, you do what your friend did. You just stick your hand up and leave it up there. Yeah. And if you're not sure, you just have a strategy in place and you just set yourself a limit. And the best thing is take your best mate with you or your wife, whichever is the best one. I wouldn't tell and, your wife. And, you and, put your hand up permanently. And, and, oh, and then just <laughs> tell them to pull you away when you've reached the limit. You can just go on and on. I, just one final thing before we go for a break. I don't suppose David Cameron was in that hindsight uh, <laughs> company of yours by any chance. Hey, well, you can join it free of charge. The shares yeah. are issued freely if anybody wants I to bet, join that. I bet they are a wonderful issued freely. Thing. Bet they are. Like, we're going to go for a break in, uh, in a second. Before we do, can I just say again, if anybody wants to phone in, ask any questions, give us a call 0208 346 3345. Come and speak to the guys. They, they don't bite. Well, not too often anyway. Or text us in on 07 976 033. We really want to hear from you out there with any of your questions, property related, even if it's something slightly away from auctions, we can talk about it. We're going to go for a break. Get yourself a cafe. We'll be back soon. King's Group has been in the high street for nearly 30 years. Agreeing a sale on your property is the easy part. Ensuring it completes and you move is the hard part in today's market. That's why we're here with you every step of the way. And there's no upfront fee. At King's Group, we are local property experts with a proven track record. King's 
have won over 50 Estes Awards for customer service voted for by you, the public. We have also been awarded the FIFO Gold Service 2018 Award for outstanding service voted again by our satisfied clients. We are motivated to move you with the minimum fuss in the quickest possible time while ensuring you're given the personal customer service and advice you deserve. Kings Group, with branch offices across North London, East London, Hertfordshire and Essex, Kings Group are offering a special discount of 20% to LGR listeners off all our standard fees. Simply mention LGR, The Property Show. For further information, please call on 01707 872 000 or visit www.kings-group.net. Kings Group, you only pay on results, not promises. You are listening to The Property Show, produced by Iro Levanu and presented by Carl Knight, partner at the King's Group Estate Agency. Welcome back, everybody. Hope you enjoyed the music. It was chosen specifically by uh, my producer, Iro. Something special for everybody out there. So again, give us a call, 0208 346 3345. We want to hear from you. Gentlemen. Are we still okay? Indeed, we are. Excellent. Absolutely. I wanted to get into, Philip, what do people actually, if they're coming to a, a, a live auction on the day, what, what do they need to arrive at that auction with? Well, probably a certain degree of confidence and knowledge of what they're buying. <laughs> it, it's not unknown for sometimes people to buy a property and not really know what they're buying, which is a grave mistake, and I, and I don't really like that situation. We especially see that with freehold ground rents, which are freehold properties where you just get a, a nominal rent whilst the lessee stays in there for the next 50 or 100 years, and people sometimes misunderstand that. So that, that's quite dangerous. But it, Is that because they, they have tried to cheat or swerve on the spending a little bit of money with Paul's mob in the uh, solicitors industry it's, and lawyers. it's partly that it's partly because they don't understand it and we have a behind the scenes seminar for before each auction at 9 30 anybody's welcome to come along because we want to educate people um, not just stretton's i'm a member of the royal institution of child surveyors and the rics is very keen to educate the public to know what to do when you come to an auction we're not trying to sell people properties that they don't really want so what you need to do before like anything is do your homework yeah you wouldn't go on a holiday probably without at least looking on the internet as to where your hotel is what it is what time your flights are and what sort of sun cream you might need to take there yeah. it's not quite so sunny at the auction but come along um, in our catalogue, we give a we give a note in the inside front cover of the catalogue, a guide to prospective purchasers of what they should and shouldn't do. The thing to remember is when the hammer falls, and if I'm allowed to knock, because that's literally what happens, contracts are exchanged there and then. You can't change your mind afterwards. And Paul's nodding here as the lawyer. He realises that the people have to do their homework first. So read the information pack, go and see the property, come and talk to the auctioneers, go and talk to your solicitor. We even have a solicitor on the day in the auction room who will freely give you a little bit of advice as to what to do and my advice is if you're not sure what to do don't bid okay well, what if you do change your mind paul well you lose your deposit you which would be what, what how much well 10 percent normally that well, you it's take, not only 10 percent, and also the loss of value exactly. if, if the vendor then does not succeed in selling the property for the price that you've bid yeah and for example if he gets an offer of fifty thousand pound less you can be sued for the fifty thousand pounds the right. shortfall and a lot of people don't realize that no. and that's quite important i want people to be frightened when they're going in many ways i want them to have done their homework yes because you forgot to mention one other thing they need to bring there's a well, check the money of course yes. <laughs> <laughs> well we used, to take, we, used to, we used to take we used to take cashiers again we don't take cash anymore but really a check or ideally that's a deb- not what a i've been card. told <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> we're not allowed to take cash anymore under money laundering regulations. No, no seriously, no. I would recommend anybody that's thinking of selling and buying at auction, one, if you're thinking of selling, and I'm not plugging the solicitor's profession, but get your lawyer involved, yeah. preparing the pack, which the, the, the surveyors will need. It puts everybody on notice. You disclose any material fact. And if that hammer goes down at the auction, you've sold your property with no problems. In fact, and, to give the lawyers a plug, I'd say take your lawyer with you. Mm. No, yes, yeah. we're very expensive. Yeah. <laughs> the lawyer will be holding your arm down now. He, no. might, he might buy it. No. He might scratch his <laughs> nose and buy it without Now, now. Um, Stuart, so how does that differ uh, when you, when the deal's done on the... T- let's say it's a 20-day time auction and, and the... And the uh, I mean, what, what if it's a 20-day time auction and, and the, the figure that's acceptable is hit on day one? How does that work? 
and the client can agree to exchange contracts there and then. They can, yeah. Or they can hold out for the or twenty days. Or they can days. hold out, yeah. Yeah, but they can, um, yeah. So the auction will run until the end of the auction, until the timer goes down. But they can effectively agree to exchange okay. contracts at that figure. And let's say I was the buyer then, that w- and I came up with an acceptable offer to uh, the seller, and was happy to pay. Well, I would never be happy, but was prepared to pay the fees. So, and and it's the end of the auction, or the buyer, uh, the seller accepts it. So what what do I need to do? What's di- is there anything different that I would need to do in that instance compared to obviously an auction, a live auction? Yes and no. I mean, I think the main thing is, as, as um, Philip rightly said, is is to be prepared. Download the legal pack. Take that to your solicitor. Get your solicitor to look through the legal pack. Mm-hmm. And get your finances in place, and then once you've once you've offered, we then do something whereby you fill in a, a sign a bidding form. So nice. that's a, your that's your promise to the to the um, the seller that you're going to exchange contracts at that figure. And what what if you don't then? What if you then retract that? So is I'm that point, a legal document? Yeah, yeah. So it's a legal document, and then you'll put down five percent deposit, which goes against the value of the property. Okay, that's sent onto the seller's solicitors as it would be normally, and then you pay your three point seven five percent plus fat registration fee as well. Okay. One of the things that I, 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 I asked Stuart this, uh, Stuart McKay, you might be able to see. One of the things that I've seen, and this is what I don't really understand about auctions, is because people tell me, some people tell me that auctions, they buy things that are too, uh, or things are sold there for more money than they should be. Other people tell me that they can get bargains there. I've got to say, in, in, the, in the shows that I've been involved with on Homes Under the Hammer, a lot of the stuff that I've seen, I, I, I think people have paid too much money for at auctions. Would you, would you say that's the case? Well, it's my job to get the best price I can for the seller. Well, you're so doing a very good job. There. I am doing a good job. That's <laughs> that's what I'm out to do. So, in in some respects, it's not my problem if they think they've paid too much. But it's all about hindsight investments, isn't it? With hindsight, it looks it looks like you might have paid too much. But most people are quite candid. They know really what they're going in for. Mm. And I think you can't predict. I mean, obviously, Brexit's a big issue at the moment, and these unsettled markets unsettled. People can't predict that interest rates could go up to the heady heights of fifteen percent, as they did in the nineteen nineties, which most people don't remember anymore. Or that the fact that (laughs) so do I. The fact is, the the fact is that they're so they're so low now. I think you just property is a long term investment. I think anybody who thinks they can quickly buy and sell like they can can in a monopoly game is not really true. There are dealers out there who do that, and they're not making massive margins but they're doing a lot of they're doing a lot of transactions and making a bit of money all the way along there but if you're just buying the one-off property mm-hmm. as your one investment then you want to get it right and you will be holding it for long term Stuart McKay one of the things that it's often said there's more transparency with auctions than there is with the buying process through high street agents would you agree with that possibly from the outset but once essentially once you've got something agreed then all the same information's just going to be available to you anyway i suppose the only difference is there's no gazundering and gazumping in in auctions whereas in the high street there can be still can't there because of the the process well it all happens in the room at, at one time any any gazumping essentially happens within that what is it two minute period in, yep, in, a, the, in a live auction yeah in a live auction yeah and i suppose that the, in, in a, an online auction the, there is well, i don't know it's not but it could be gazumping because if, if somebody made an offer that was acceptable on day one but they carried on running the auction and then somebody offered more it'll keep going yeah yeah i don't know is that because it's not really gazumping that's because part of the process isn't it well i think with online auctions and Stuart can correct me when you get to the time of closing of the auctions you get a bid within three minutes of the auction close and it will carry on for a further period of yeah. time to yeah. stop people like at ebay often people have sort of got their fingers poised on the button to press when they just before the bidding closes it doesn't yeah. happen with an online auction They'll just have an extension they have an extension to let it run so, uh, technically, then, there's maybe more fairness in the process? I think it probably is fairer. It's it's transparent. As as Stuart, the estate agent, says, people still have all the same information. I think a lot of it's hearts and minds, though, isn't it? If you fall in love with a house and you find that there's a right-of-way at the back that you didn't realise at the beginning or the lease isn't as long as it was, really, you should start to renegotiate the price. But if you know there's five other people behind you looking to buy the property, you'll probably go ahead and buy it and fa- face potentially any consequences later on. Whereas at auction, you should have been able to seal that information beforehand and, and you can bid accordingly. Do, do we, which do we think is more straightforward, the live auction, the high street state? Because obviously, look, looking at the figures, you, it's a, do you say 3% of properties? Uh, only about 2% of UK properties are sold at auction. And less than 5% are sold through online agents at this moment in time. So really, we're talking over 90% of properties sold through high street estate agents. So it would seem that the public seem to feel more comfortable with that than 
than auctions. Well, I think it's a traditional way. I quite like the Scottish method, really, where it is a little bit like auction. You put your bid in, your bid's accepted, Mm. and then the sale process goes through. I think if estate agents counted how many times they put a property under offer on average, it's probably three or four times in in, in certain markets. Yes, sometimes And you can just be faffing around, whereas auction, once the hammer's fallen, that's it. But the the problem we've got in this country, though, is we have chains. People Mm. buy and sell at the same time. So you can't do that at auction. No. You'd have to break the chain effectively, sell your property and complete and then go to the auction. Whereas selling for an estate agent, you've got the flexibility that you exchange at the same time on your sale and purchase and tie in the, the completion at the same time. So back, the back-to-back deals, really, aren't yes. they? So yeah. that's, the, that's yeah. the problem we've got. So you need to be a cash buyer then, do you? you need, I think so. Well, not a cash buyer, cash but buyer, you, no. you, you mustn't be dependent on another transaction okay but but if what if you need to get a mortgage and you're buying an auction what, what how should you go about that then? Well, well i think nowadays it's easier to get a mortgage than it used to be in, in in a fairly short time period i remember when i took my first mortgage out three centuries ago probably but you know you had to go and see the manager you had to organize the mortgage and it took six or eight weeks then you were given a, a little certificate which said you had an offer then you went to find the property well you wouldn't be able to buy at auction on that basis there are bridging lenders who will lend short term on auctions they they stand at nearly every auction house has uh, auction room has them in there but a lot of people either have bank of mum and dad if you're a first time buyer it's quite common for us to see a young couple in the auction room with an older couple either side and you think that's got to be mum and dad helping they're releasing equity so you can sort your money out that way also if you're if you're on friendly terms with your bank manager and you understand he understands you you can get him to go and look at the property and he'll give you an in principle loan i got a text come in here that saying how, what happens if you agree to buy a property at auction and then you can't get a mortgage? Well, it is very much buyer beware. It's you you it. basically forfeit your deposit, and as, as I explained before, you then pay any damages suffered by the vendor. So, okay. if you're relying upon That's a from mortgage, Peter, that is. yeah, I mean, if you're relying upon a mortgage, I would get your mortgage agreed in principle and yeah. get pay your valuation can, can, fee how, how, what, what about the surveyor though can you get the surveyor you, you in can, there before yes, the yes, auction? yes you yeah. can the problem with that is though if you're going to pay four or five hundred quid you're for a survey things up front and then you might you, you're going to pay fifty two thousand and someone else pays sixty two thousand yeah. you don't go ahead with it you've you've done your money haven't you well i've heard people before say i won't get a survey until afterwards because i don't want to waste the money well that's a little bit like having a medical after you've run the marathon to find you've got a heart defect you need to do the work beforehand <laughs> don't you that's, that's a very good point very very good point <laughs> I mean, I, I don't. Do you fix mortgages are easy these days, Stuart? You you work with mortgage brokers all the time. <laughs> They're certainly not easier. And if you are buying an auction, then you certainly need to make sure you're going to have no issues whatsoever with getting a mortgage. Because ultimately, you say about having a survey before, and if you're going to do that, then most definitely you should do. But I think one issue that that I can see is that if you if you do your survey at say. 50,000 and end up buying at 60,000 and you haven't got the extra 10 grand you need to loan it then what are you going to do what do you do then well yeah. the thing is you don't bid if you can't afford what you've saved and what you can borrow you don't bid over that going price. back to people getting carried away yeah. and it's not securing the mortgage it's okay. the amount of the mortgage isn't it i yeah, think all too often people yeah. are looking for high percentages now mm. if you're looking for 50 percent on a purchase i should think most lenders will will lend to you but you need to be aware there are some lenders that have a criteria where they won't lend so properties if it doesn't have a kitchen in or central mm-hmm. heating they will say now that, that they won't lend also i don't think they'll lend on properties that have been sold within the past six months no uh, yeah. some lenders won't yeah. but also we're getting a lot of lenders talking of services we're getting a lot of lenders now doing desktop surveys yep. so if there's a high enough or a low enough known loans of value then people are doing desktop surveys we're getting mortgage offers well, without well, sorry what, what, what's in. a debt uh, i know but i think uh, the listeners would need to know could you explain what a desktop survey is? essentially they evaluate what else has been sold in the local area and if that fits in with the price of the property then they'll agree that the the, the valuation price is okay so they wouldn't send us going to see it yeah. to look at right. it yeah, but I obviously the, the, the danger with that, that is that you haven't got a professional person looking at the property before you commit to buy it. Yeah, so they're so quite it, dangerous. I think, so even if they did that, you really should instruct your own surveyor. Yeah, well, you should. Anyway. To go along. I mean, most lenders give you the option of having a full survey, home buyer's report, or just a pure valuation. Okay. I'm just going to ask again. So, at an auction, do we not need? Is a buyer not going to need things such like a passport, ID, things like oh, that? Oh, certainly, we want to know who you are. Your ID, anti-money laundering. Now, we are also ask people to pre-register, so right. they can so they can give us their details beforehand. We say you can't you can't bid unless you pre-register. But I have to be honest and say, how do I know you've not pre-registered if you're standing in the room? 
even if I give you a bidding card, you could have been passed that by somebody else. But most people are honest and upfront. They want to pre-register. We also have a passport type system on our properties. If you're looking at any of our properties in our auction, so our next auction on the 10th of December, you go onto the onto the website. You'd look at the property. You'd have to put your details in to get an email back to say, OK, you're registered now to look at properties. We would know who you are, what your mobile number is and your email address and what you've been looking at online. And we can feed that back to the client. Well, Stuart, I know you, the, you're the fastest fastest growing auction house is Indeed, that right? yes yeah uh, so what's your growth this year compared to last year or, or uh, the last i think 12 we've months? gone from about 700 agents to just over a thousand i think now and uh, so so how many properties are you uh, have you did you sell last year I or think last year over three thousand okay that's that's a that's a phenomenal the reason i ask that it, there's a, uh, an article in the property i uh october the 10th saying the auction house claimed that they've got they were uh, they've got over 800 lots that are going under the hammer the first time in any given month is you're smiling <laughs> <laughs> okay well maybe i shouldn't ask that question but i think we can safely say can we say then that we do think that auctions are sort of making a slight comeback that there's more people are turning to this do we think that's because the market is distressed there've always been auctions auctions for all sorts of things in holland they sell flowers by auctions and we've been selling property and all sorts of things like that they're they're, they're very useful they're very useful in a counter cyclical market so if the market's becoming difficult and awkward and people are looking to sell it's a bit like selling to a chain breaker people put the property in auction accept they might take a little bit less or take less than they might have sold private treaty but the, if they put it in the auction um, three weeks before our sale the catalogue comes out within three weeks time you'll know that it's sold or not and four weeks after you'll have your money in the bank so if you put it in that auction on the 10th of December you'd have your money in the bank before the end of January and you can emigrate to Australia or Greece or wherever you want to go afterwards I think one of the biggest things I've noticed going from live ballroom auctions to online auctions is the type of property that online auctions now sell so in live auctions i think philip would probably agree you've got a certain type of property yeah you sell. ours your, yours are a little bit more probably more akin to what the private treaty agent would sell yeah. we'll, we'll sell a private wa- treaty being high street high yeah, street agents but, yeah. yeah we sell a w- wide range wide range of probably we we're selling some sites recently that have had advertising hoardings on where they had virtually no reserve only 100 pounds so you think that's great isn't it and it sold for eighteen thousand pounds who's yeah. to say it was worth that much but i don't think Stuart would have probably attracted that sort of demand there but we would probably wouldn't track a great deal of demand if it was a modern three-bedroom semi-detached property that's just been refurbished or it's built just don't think it would fit within yeah. the within the catalog I think that's been the most interesting thing for me is that you know we're, we're selling absolutely there's no problems with any of the properties so perfectly fine finely decorated no structural issues nothing like that it's just a normal everyday house it's just that the the owner has made the, that decision the to, to go yeah the, the time the quicker time skills and the certainty of a sale and that's the biggest thing oh. that we're finding in an uncertain market yeah would you, would you agree with that Stu? yeah i think essentially everything whether it be auction or a high street agent or an online auction no matter what it is everything's price dependent yes right so if if you have something at the auction which is far too much money it's not going to sell if you have something with a high street agent it's it's not going to sell if it's too much money you said earlier you don't want to get into it but essentially the the reason there's so many options is because of the this the way the system works hmm. essentially there's people who are in a rush say so it's a good option to them to go to auction because they they need the certainty their situation's yeah. changed or their situation is exactly. such that they need to capitalise their money so a lot of people we deal with have actually been let down by the private treaty system yeah and, and somebody switched to online auction because of that certainty because they've been let down yeah. by the long drawn out process of private treaty yeah. and although this is a property show it's really a people show because yes. it's about the people that own the properties yeah, and what their right, needs yeah. are and what so their needs it, are yeah, what their absolutely. Needs are. yeah and we wouldn't forget. take we, if, I, I turn people away I say this is not really for you it's not ideal go and speak to Kings thank you very much <laughs> <laughs> I was going to ask it, uh, just a couple of things before we because we, I'm, I'm mindful we're running out of time but it's okay it's the only way to bid at a live auction to actually attend the auction and and because some people are shy that's why we've well, not had any direct phone calls I, I, I think you should always <laughs> I, I personally would recommend you do I go would. purely because you can see who else is in the room and who's bidding if you do it on the telephone you're not going to know whether there's anybody else bidding against no. you right. i mean we do proxy or telephone bids proxy bids are where you say my maximum price is x yeah. but more often than not it's a telephone bid and it might be because the the buyer can't make it on the day it might be that the property is in cornwall and they live in cornwall they're not going to come all the way to london to bid on something that's around the corner from where they are and we will just be there the per- will be their voice and eyes in the room you can watch the auction online as well you can watch the auction was, can you bid online alive uh, yeah. we do we do do online or have done online bidding but we don't find it's fast enough 
even now there's still about a four or five second delay and when you're taking bids or you know taking bids of 10 20 30 40 50 60 it's very difficult for an online bidder to to really get his foot in the door okay as paul said you really ought to be there and also you feel it you can always you can smell, smell the atmosphere yeah. Yeah. it is an experience yeah. come and find out come to behind the scenes seminar come and see barnum and bailey indeed <laughs> so it's entertaining s- free and cheap summing up do your homework yes make sure you've Spoken to your solicitor and got legal counsel. Absolutely. Yeah. Physically go and look at the property yourself. Definitely. If necessary, get a surveyor. Well, probably get a surveyor in there. Uh, or certainly a, a very reputable builder. Absolutely. Yeah. Write down what you're going to bid. Don't go over it. Show your maximum. Anything else we want to add to that? If I was a seller, go over your maximum bid. <laughs> if you're a seller, go <laughs> <laughs> But the, the other th- important thing to say, on any property transaction, if it's a freehold property, you need to insure it. As soon as the account contracts are exchanged, you're responsible for insuring yeah. it. We have an insurance broker in the room, but if not, speak to your broker about, if I buy this property, can you put it on cover for me straight away? The last thing you want five minutes after the auction is to find it's just tumbled into the Clyde, like your earlier example. Yes, because yeah, yeah, you're legally liable, aren't you, yeah. from exchange yeah. there? But that's the same with private treaty yeah. on most freeholds not leaseholds because the landlord it's insurance. sort of done for you in private treaties it's part yeah. of the process well, when options, you say we actually tell clients yeah. before you exchange uh, obtain at least three quotes for building yeah. insurance to make sure one that it's easily be insurable at a reasonable premium obviously you exchange and you insure it straight away and just thank because it's been insured it doesn't yeah. mean especially after all the floods in the uk mm. they may they may not insure it at the no. thank you very much gentlemen thank you. i've got to finish there because we're nearly out of time Hopefully that's been of help to our listeners. Maybe they're going to, are going to consider going down that route auctions. If there's anything you want to know, contact us uh, at the station after the show. And I suppose, in conclusion, the question is, are auctions for everybody or, or just some people? Could they be the route for you, the listeners, to buy or sell your property in these distressed times, tough times for everybody? I think J- Jason Statham, the action thriller actor, put it about right when he was asked about his father's profession. He said, my father used to run auctions. And now he's a singer in the Canary Islands. On that note, good evening. Until next time, we'll see you soon. Thank good you. Night. Thank you. Thank you. The Property Show was brought to you by Kings Group, a multi-award-winning company, your local high street property business that delivers on results and service. We'll get you moving. Το King's Group έχει παρουσία στην αγορά κινήτων για σχεδόν 30 χρόνια. Η συμφωνία πώληση της ιδιοκτησίας σας είναι το εύκολο κομμάτι. Η εξασφάλιση της πώληση όμως είναι το δύσκολο κομμάτι στη σημερινή αγορά. Γι' αυτό είμαστε εμείς εδώ, μαζί σας, σε κάθε σας βήμα, χωρίς προκαταβολή. Στο King's Group είμαστε ειδικοί στον τομέα των ακινήτων, με αποδεδειγμένο ιστορικό. Η εταιρεία Kings έχει κερδίσει περισσότερα από 50 βραβεία έστας για την εξυπηρέτηση υψηλών πρωτιαγραφών των πελατών μας, για τα οποία ψηφίσατε εσείς, το κοινό. Μας απονεμήθηκε επίσης το βραβείο FIFO Gold Service 2018 για εξαιρετική εξυπηρέτηση, το οποίο πάλι ψηφίστηκε από τους πελάτες μας. Σας εξασφαλίζουμε ταχύτατες υπηρεσίες χωρίς άγχος, δίνοντας όλες τις απαραίτητες συμβουλές. Το Kings Group έχει υποκαταστήματα στο βόρειο και ανατολικό Λονδίνο, στο Hertfordshire και στο Essex. Το Kings Group προσφέρει στους ακροατές του LGR ειδική έκπτωση 20% σε όλες τις τιμές μας. Απλά αναφέρετε LGR The Property Show. Για περισσότερες πληροφορίες επικοινωνήστε στο 0170-787-2000 ή επισκεφτείτε την ιστοσελίδα μας www.kingspavlagroup.net Kings Group. Πληρώνεται μόνο μετά το αποτέλεσμα. Όχι για υποσχέσεις.